tragic loss of life very, very seriously. Um, and so we expect audience participation, sound effects, and general um, pantomime rubbish. The Royal Mail Steamship Packet Company's RMS Rome. Um, it's difficult to understand now how important she was at the time. Um, but she was the best ship afloat. I mean, she was the Titanic of her time. She was um, a very, very impressive ship. Um, the, uh, the stern propeller, as we now know propellers, um, had only just been proven um, to work on full-size vessels. And uh, the RMS run in those sister ships, the Dorado, Juro. Uh, she had two. She had two sister ships. Uh, they were the first three large vessels that were commissioned with propellers um, and they worked so well that, uh, that that was effectively the end of paddle wheel steamers. We do 12, 12 knots um, under engines or sails, uh, but of course as we've proven, the engines are an awful lot more useful because you can actually go the way you want to go, um, as opposed to sails going the way that you kind of have to go to try and get to where you want to go. 2,738 tons, uh, 310 feet long by 40 feet wide. Similar width to us, three times longer um, and about 20 times heavier. So a very, very massive boat. Uh, I haven't picked it carried quite a lot. 253 first class, 30 second class, 30 first class. Thank you, Miss Thea. She obviously can do that anyway. I can't, I can't remember those numbers. Anyway. Um, the, the whole point of the, uh, the Steamship Packet Company was in the first bit, the Royal Mail. Um, various private companies were commissioned by the Royal Mail um, to deliver mail and valuables um, all around the world, or all around the British Empire at the time, um, which was, of course, the world force to be reckoned with. Uh, the only way that um, communication worked was to actually physically go there and actually deliver this stuff. Um, these ships almost invariably carried huge quantities of gold with them because if you wanted to buy an island or a plantation or move your wealth around, you actually physically had to do it. Um, so these ships often had an awful lot of valuables on. Um, they delivered the mail, which was their, their commissioning reason, the reason they were commissioned. Um, but they also obviously moved people around, um, valuables and that kind of stuff. The RMS Rhone. The reason she was here. Her route was um, from Southampton, the South of England, down to uh, the Virgin Islands. Then she went on to South America, um, and then she came back to the Virgin Islands, and then she went back to uh, England and their shore-based services over to Peter Island, the Great Harbour, Peter Island, um, and that is where the road was on the night of the third day of October 29th, 1867. While she was there, um, she actually had a ship alongside her called the Conway, uh, who was captained by Cap uh, Captain Hammer. Um, he was very laid back, but uh, I'm not sure if the Hammer was named after him, but he had the same name as the Hammer. <laughs> You're a tough crowd. <laughs> anyway, alright. So um, the, the, the two ships were tied up alongside each other. Um, the Conway was passing off um, and taking passengers and goods and all that kind of stuff off of the road. And, um, and the two captains, Captain Woolley, they were Come up, on stage. There we go. Woo! 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 The, uh, the, the uniform at the time for the Royal Mail Steamship Packet Company most senior captains was a green t-shirt and black shorts. Uh, so it's interesting that he got in um, got into boat there, but it's very nice. Um, here, who's, who's Captain Hammer? Jeffy. Jeffy. Jeffy's Captain Hammer. Right. Come on, guys. Captain Woody here. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, oh. Nah. The two captains conferred. They noticed uh, rather worryingly that the uh, barometer pressure was dropping. Obviously, at the time, 
weather forecasting was uh, it's actually frowned upon for the longest time by the English. Um, it, it actually was. It was, you know, it was, it was considered so unpredictable that you shouldn't base your decisions on, on a forecast. So they did, um, which was horrendous, <laughs> given what we know now. Um, but anyway, October, late October was considered comfortably out of hurricane season at the time. Um, so as the two captains were on their bridge discussing the, the, the drop in barometer pressure, they, uh, yeah, they come to start with a little cup of tea. Can I have a cup of tea, please? As the captains were discussing their options and, and what they should do, they decided, they decided that uh, because of this drop in barometer pressure, yeah, there was probably an early winter storm coming. Got to catch him when he was thirsty. Uh, um, Shot. Oh. <laughs> Myers, I hope you noticed. I got a bottle, Pete. Uh, but Myers is for the captains. Pass, pass is for the sea. Oh God, that sounded awful. I hope that didn't come out on video. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I did, lovely, wonderful. All right, so anyway, the, the two captains were discussing their options. They decided that it was uh, it was probably an early winter storm, and uh, which would be coming from the north. Uh, they were in a south-facing harbour, so they decided that the sensible thing to do would be to lift their anchors, start making steam, uh, lift their anchors, and, uh, and head over to Roadtown, uh, which, is, uh, which is a north-facing harbour, which would give them the protection of the island from the storm. RT! Yeah, and they were going into party, obviously. Um, so this they decided to do. Um, in their concern, or in their in their very sensible, uh, authoritative positions, they decided that with the Rhone being a much more seaworthy vessel, they would uh, take all the passengers off of the two ships uh, and put them onto the Rhone, because uh, fearing, you know, possible outcomes of, of a bad storm. Uh, the Conway was a much smaller vessel, nowhere near as seaworthy. So um, safety spoke out, and they decided, the two captains amongst them, that uh, Captain Woolley would steal all of Captain Hammock's passengers. <laughs> Come on board. Okay, so. So now collectively we have everybody. This is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah. Shh. They don't know that yet. <laughs> don't tell them. 